running out of food and water with a flu kicking in, this week we push 104 nautical miles out of the remote Lao group of Fiji. He has saved the day, or the night maybe I should say. To head towards the unknown island of Matuku. It's a weird case of beer, but pretty light. Don't have to do these ones. <sighs> Hello, good morning. Good morning. Today, sadly, we're saying goodbye to this place, aren't we? Ongea has been our home for the past week. We had a little bit of rain here and there. Uh, we had a village wedding in uh, the village, a yeah. Fijian wedding. Yeah. Really enjoyed this spot, but the problem is it's just so far out from anything, and um, we're running out of food. Oh, big and time. I've even been a little bit sick this this morning. Uh, we had a lot of moisture around the boat, so I think the bed was a little bit damp, and uh, I've got a little bit sick. So. We don't really want to be out here while I'm sick. No, we don't. <laughs> so we're going to move closer to Matuku, which is an island towards the mainland. Um, I've been told there's surf there. We've always had it like scheduled in to go. So we're going to head there and see if I can get some waves. Yep. And eventually head back to the mainland. We've had a great time yeah, in amazing. Fulonga yeah. and Ongea now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this place is just so deserted, mm. so, remote. Yeah. Um, so remote. We love it. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's time to keep moving. Yeah, it's been incredible. I mean, the swimming pool that we're in right now is just unreal. And all the little tucked away beaches that we've seen, it's really incredible. And this hospitality from, from the village is just something I have never experienced before. Mm. Um, so yeah, a little bit sad, but, but um, we've done our time here and it's, yeah, it's time to keep moving. It does, it definitely has a landscape like no other island we've ever seen. Yeah, or like yeah. Ongea and Falonga, yeah. just very unique. Very, uh, very unique. Totally. You need me? Now? Yeah. It's really tight. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So the snubber, what do you call it? The snubber shackle? Yep. I'm gonna name it. Uh, I kind of jammed, so I needed some Kieran assistant and some uh, pliers assistant. Um, but yeah, we are in a tiny bit of a hurry right now because Kieran just saw some clouds on the horizon. Now it's very, very shallow coming in here. It was two meters, maybe less. So we really want to have the sun um, woo, to see what we're doing when we get out of here. So I'm just going to pick up the snubber real quick. Yeah, she is spot on. The last couple mornings it's been sunny in the morning and then rainy, rainy, rainy in the afternoon. So these clouds are coming over, you can see them, there's just a wall of cloud. We want to get out of here safely in the sunlight. So that's what we're going to do right now. So I don't know if you guys can see, but the different kinds of blue that we're looking for so I have a pretty good eye now, uh, knowing what kind of blue we want and we don't want. Sometimes it's really, really hard. There could be seaweed that turns the water more green and we don't ever want green. Uh, it's very, very shallow, but um, so far so good. It is low tide right now, so we haven't timed this perfectly, but for the wind uh, that's gonna take us through Matuku, we need to go right now. Um, but we're, we're doing pretty well. Captain behind me is killing it. <laughs> Coming around the south side of Falonga, the squalls came almost directly at us, which meant we had to beat into it quite close haul.
few squalls that are about to hit us, but we got 20 knots. We're going to head sail out, and we're going almost seven knots of boat speed. Uh, it's quite very nice. Uh, the hydro vane isn't working at the moment because we've only got the head sail out, and the boat isn't balanced at all. So we're just waiting for this squall to pass, and then we can actually set the boat up to sail for the rest of the, the voyage, hopefully. Okay, we've had a very most unexpected uh, surprise for us today. We've got this beautiful, um, it's about 15, 16 knots coming from the north. We were expecting, I was getting ready to spinnaker this morning because I was expecting, uh, you know, nine knots from the east, which is nothing. We are heading almost directly into it, which is kind of a little bit of a hassle because we're on such a lean and we aren't pointing exactly at our destination right now. Hopefully as the wind changes through the night, we will point more towards Matuku. I didn't mention before, this sail will be 104 nautical miles. I don't have the charts for Matuku very well, so we have to arrive in the daytime. And by the look of it right now, that's going to happen quite easily. We're scheduled to get in about 9, 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Um, even if we slow up through the evening, that will probably turn into like one or two in the afternoon. So that is perfect for kind of navigating the, uh, the entrance, I believe, on the west side of the island. The hydro vane is kicked in. Um, we're very happy, with, I'm very happy with how he's working. Uh, he sometimes doesn't like to go very, very far into the wind, but he will go 50, 60 degrees into the wind. So I cannot complain with him right now. Let's go see Isabel and see what she's up to. Baby. How are you travelling? Oh, very well. Yeah? Yeah. It's going quite nice. Quite unexpected, but really, really well. We just left um, Kulanga then, and now the waves are starting a little bit. But uh, no, it's going really well. The sails are great, and the hard rain is performing beautifully. We just had some lunch, and uh, yeah, now we're just going to sit here and enjoy. You look pretty rugged up. Are you a little bit chilly? A little bit. A little bit? A little bit. It's blowing, uh, yeah, it's blowing a bit, so yeah. Keeping warm. Yeah. And the harness is on. Yes. Good girl. <laughs> so you can see um, the clouds have completely gone away. There's, I actually see a little bit of blue sky, which is uh, unheard of this afternoon. We saw it this morning and it was very nice, but uh, it's been really, really miserable this afternoon, but very happy to see some blue sky out and about. and seven knots and it's coming from right where we want to go. We just turn on the engine and both me and Karen are like darn it, <laughs> in lack of better words. Now we have to hand steer because our autopilot is um, still not working or it worked for a brief moment and uh, then it stopped again. So we're hand steering for 20-30 minutes and then Karen goes ah one second He's my hero. Well, most days he's my hero, but today he has saved the day or the night, maybe I should say. Hello, you beautiful thing. Hello. I just told them that you saved the night. Wow. Do you want to tell everyone what you did? Yes. 
so um, we've, had, we've been having issues with our autopilot for the last two, three weeks. And I worked out the other day that it's mostly the buttons here in this control unit that just won't do anything. Everything will be working fine if these buttons would just work. So we put the course computer back up the other day. We never used it before, never used it before, never needed to. So I put it back up the other day so the guys in Suva could do a software update on the system, which they didn't do. But I put it up there so they could do that. And I just left it up there, just thought, why not? And I was scrolling through all the menus and everything, and I found out this menu that says autopilot on screen engagement. And then it was disabled, so I enabled it, and I was able to control the autopilot from the course computer downstairs. Which is incredible. Which is quite great. Now we don't have the hands here in the middle of the night. Yes. We've had this wind that's kind of... Been there, done that. Been Sorry. there, done that. <laughs> We've had this wind that's kind of wrapped around today and now it's facing basically directly in the way that we want to go. So the, the motor has gone on and we had been steering off the hydro vane, which has been great when there's wind and when we're steering in the direction we want to go. But when the wind comes straight into us, we can't steer off the hydro vane anymore and we need the autopilot to be engaged. And a very good morning to you uh, from one merry weather coming up on Matuku. Uh, yes, we had a very ordinary night's sleep last night. These one night passages are a little bit of a struggle. We never really get into the groove. And I gotta be honest, I slept from 3.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. So it's that, like two and a half hours. I tried most of the night to sleep during uh, my off, off my shift and uh, absolute struggle street unfortunately but it's all good because we are going to put an anchor down within an hour and a half and we're going to be seeing this beautiful new island Matuku which is literally right in front of me and I think it, it, it just looks beautiful. We haven't seen many islands in Fiji that are actually high like mountainous so this is looking extremely high and uh we're i'm yeah i'm very much looking forward to putting down an anchor and checking it, checking it out i've been told there's surf here so that's one of the main reasons we're coming here <laughs> there's many different options on islands to choose from and this one is meant to have surf so i will be sussing that out over the next couple of days once i've catching up on some sleep my dearest darling is just making some food, I am very happy to say, because I haven't eaten very well either on this passage. It's been, uh, I don't know, yesterday when I woke up I had a bit of a headache and felt a little bit fluey and with that my appetite just kind of went. We didn't want to be stuck out in the far out loud group while I was sick or anything like that. And we have, we are running out low on food and, um, and that sort of thing. So. It is time to start heading slowly back towards um, civilization. <laughs> How's your sail been, babe? Um, yeah, pretty, pretty good. Um, would have loved more wind, but no. We were here two last night, I'm like 12-ish, so this morning we both got a couple hours we sleep in the same bed, that was nice. Very happy to finally see this island, I think it's going to be a hidden gem. 
Um, we saw the village on the side here. Uh, I'm still a bit tired, so um, sleep tonight is going to be great. It's going to be an early one night. So we are just coming into this bay now in uh, Matuku. Um, it is stunning. We have huge, huge mountains on all sides of us. We're hoping to find a bit of water that's uh, shallow enough for us to anchor. Right now we're in 43 meters. So we really need to get in here, find something less than 15 to um, put down an anchor. But very, very much liking this place so far. Charts are really, really ordinary. Um, we're just going off a track that we got from a friend. Um, so we're taking it nice and slow, being very cautious. And we just put down the anchor. It's so quiet in here. There is a little village on my right here, and, and I've seen that many of the locals there um, sitting and looking at us as we came in. Um, we just, me and Cameron were talking about it. Um, they don't, I don't think that they get a lot of yachts in here, a lot of sailboats, especially on hurricane season. So I think it's quite a happening thing. We are, Karen's just gonna put up the drone and then we're gonna drop the dinghy in the water and then we're gonna go in and say hi. Uh, present our kava to the Sebu Sebu and uh, after that we're gonna make some food and go to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, it's quite a big contrast where we were uh, two nights ago with the beach and the little small mushroom islands to this um, incredible landscape too. But um, yeah, it's quite different and it's, uh, it's really nice. It really feels like we're back in French Polynesia and the Society Islands, um, which we really loved as well. So, yeah, very nice. We're tired. I was gonna say something then, and it didn't come out. I was like, "Oh well, I really am tired." It didn't come out. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> "No, no, no, nothing." We're very tired, but the the tradition here in Fiji is when you walk up to a new village, then you uh, announce yourself and you um, ask your permission to be there in the form of a sever sever. It's like bringing your neighbors a beer. Basically, we're, we're rocking up to their home and mm. kava in Fiji is like their case of beer. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we're delivering a case of beer right yes, now yes. and you're going to have maybe a drink with them if they feel like it. Yeah, and um, yeah, because we are on their, their land right now. So, yes, we're going to go in there and announce ourselves and that we're not so scary. I don't know about you. I can be scared. No, that's not working either. <laughs> Try to make a joke I when you're this any, tired. I can't make any jokes when oh, I'm this tired. Okay, well, yeah, we're we're gonna. It's gonna be a short visit, and then we're gonna come home and crash. I think. Shalip. Shalip. Karen's putting on a sulu. My sulu action. My, my tail. I mean sulu. It's going a bit slower than usual. <sighs> Beautiful. Have you ever seen a man in a towel look more delicious? No. It's a weird case of beer, but pretty light. Don't have to do these ones. You can do them anyway. <laughs> Thank you. 
Unfortunately, we timed our arrival with low tide, which meant anchoring our dinghy Ralph quite a way up and walking the shallows in. You are from Australia, Australia, and Sweden. Oh, Sweden. Sweden. I'm gonna say you should 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 to me na matin to Australia, but then na maramon should to me Sweden, if I'm right. Yeah. I think I'm should to me I'm gonna in a Romania busa, and I go to Romania to to Romachi, from to Chilebelevo, and I can load to to run to Romania busa, to run to busa. From to na to Romania busa, number one to show to me the city kuwa. Tak boleh orang kita di sini tu indo nama ruti kita nama itu belum mati. Ina nunggu anda boleh belum mati. Ini tadi kita langgan ni na subuh tu abis aku nanti tengok kalau nak nonton mai di mana boleh kita lihat. So ya untuk belum mati, untuk tu ada yang yang bagi nunggu kita nak lihat tomba. Anda kalau ibu aku nunggu tu kita coba mendengar mana. Ina ando.